let's talk about life, specifically John Conway's Game of Life. This is a good programming challenge for playing with the Pico computer graphics. I'll begin with the Wikipedia page so we can review the rules. In a nutshell, we draw some starting pixels called live cells, then repeatedly apply some logic. The logic has to be applied all at once, so we need to double buffer the graphics. If you've never worked with cellular automata before, pause the video and read this whole thing. I'll read the four numbered rules because they're the most important part. Any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies, as if by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies, as if by overpopulation. Any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell, as if by reproduction. Okay, that seems easy enough. Let's start coding it. I'm going to do this in C, since basic will be too slow, and assembly will take too much time. Starting with this blank project, the first thing we need to do is set up the graphics system. When a Pico computer application starts up, there is no graphics or sound configured. We activate these systems by setting extended registers with the xreg command. I'll create a function called setup. The first step in activating graphics is to pick a canvas resolution. The documentation gives us a few choices. 320 by 180 will look good on YouTube, so let's go with that. It says here we need to set address 100 to a value of 2. So going back to the code, we call xregn with the address 100 and tell it to set one register to a value of 2. Next, we need to put something on the canvas. Both character and bitmap modes would suit the rules of life. I'm going with a bitmap mode, so let's see how we set that up. Looks like more extended registers. Okay, so 101 is set to 3 to indicate bitmap mode. Then 102 is options for the bit depth. We just need black and white to indicate live or dead cells, so a value of 0 goes there. Now the 103 register needs an extended memory address for a config structure. I'll put this near the end of memory, let's say FF00. We can ignore the plain begin and end options for this application. Let's go to the config structure. X and Y wrap can be ignored since we're going to use the full screen. X and Y pixels get set to zero, indicating the graphics should begin drawing at the upper left of the screen. Width and height are 320 by 180 to match the canvas size. The data pointer will be set to zero so that the bitmap graphics data will begin at extended memory location zero. And the palette pointer will be FFFF, which is a magic number pointing to a built-in color palette. Let's code all that up. We can set all the extended registers at once in one command. We can also use the XRAM0 struct set macro to set the structure information. Let's run it and see what happens. Oops, nothing happened. Well, something happened. My monitor tried to change modes, but the program exited and turned off the graphics before we could see anything. Let's add an infinite loop to the end of main so we can see what's going on. Okay, good. We have a screen full of garbage. That's expected because we didn't clear out memory. No problem, we can do that. But first, let's make a second buffer in system RAM for the graphics. 
The rules required a second buffer, and this will let me start using size of to know how much extended memory to clear. To access extended memory, we use the RIA registers. We set the address we're interested in. We set a step value of 1 so that every time we access extended memory, the address will increment by 1. This greatly speeds up sequential access, which is perfect for copying or clearing a range of memory. And finally, we loop around, writing zeros to our graphics memory. Let's run the program. Okay, it's a blank screen, just what we need. Next up, we need to draw our first generation of life on the screen. Going back to Wikipedia, I picked this glider, which should move across the screen in a diagonal when everything is working. So we need a function to set pixels to make the live cells, as it were. Just like with clearing the screen, we use the RIA registers and a bit of math to find the right bit. I'll also make an unset function that we'll use later. Now I'll set some pixels for our glider spaceship. Okay, let's run the program. Perfect, we have generation zero of our glider spaceship. Now we can begin implementing the rules of life. I'll make a function called next, which will process one generation. The first thing we need to do is make a copy of the screen data so we can apply the rules atomically. This is the same code pattern as clearing the screen, except we copy the extended memory into that system memory buffer we made earlier. Now we can use the newly populated buffer to analyze what pixels are live and dead. Since we need a count of live neighbors, I'll make a function that returns 0 or 1 so that we can add up the results. Now we go back to the iterator and loop over every pixel on the screen. Note that I'm skipping the very edges so that we don't need to deal with checking to see if we're on an edge. Alternatively, you could make the get function safe, but not checking at all is faster, so let's just not check at all. For each pixel, we count its living neighbors by adding up how many are live.
Huh, there's an error. Okay, we just have the wrong return value up here. That's better. Now we check the pixel itself to see if it's live. If it is, and it doesn't have two or three neighbors, we make it dead. If it's dead and it has exactly three neighbors, we make it live. Okay, that's everything. Unless I made a mistake, this will work. And it works. This is the next generation of the glider. I'll change it so the next function runs a few hundred times. Wow, that's slow. Let me turn on the editing magic. Okay, now it's perfect. We have a working glider. Our program is complete. I'll put it on GitHub and leave a link in the description. That's all for this time. If you want to see more of this type of video, drop your thoughts and ideas in the comments. Thanks for watching.